and succulent growers, it's Lynn and this is part four of moving my uh, cacti and succulents that I have had overwintering inside the house back out into the large big green polytunnel for the summer months and it's it's May now sort of coming up to late May and I would normally would have had all these euphorbia here in the grow room out for at least by the middle of April. But because it's been a slow start to the spring, we had a chilly spring. The weather's only really just got recently nice the past couple of weeks. So I've been very busy moving cacti and suck instead of had it either inside the polytunnel back into our white, white greenhouse for summer or plants in the house back out into the big polytunnel and yard for the summer. And today I'm going to be doing all the euphorbias here that I've had overwintering in the grow room. And um, they've been doing very well in this grow room. A lot of them are well into active growth, as you can see here, my euphorbia trigona, lots of leaves, and um, all my other euphorbias waking up, coming into growth as well. Lots of leaves there are my euphorbia Suzanne. And um, this one here is my Alordia. Lots and lots of wonderful leaves on this. This is an amazing succulent. And um, also my Ocotillo as well here. And I've got a lot of smaller, smaller euphorbias as well in the window, some Canariensis and other types. So they're all going to be coming out into the big large polytunnel for the spring and the rest of the spring and for the summer very excited to do this and as i say they've been under the grow lights so that won't need to be on anymore i don't like to have to have grow lights on still at the end of may but i've had to keep them out that bit longer as i mentioned because it had been a had been a cold start to the spring until recently so they're going to love coming out i've also got some larger growing euphorbia that i moved out into the the white greenhouse the other day when we moved out all of our serious type of cacti and succulents and they're doing very well out there as well these are all my smaller ones i also have a lot of small euphorbia in our kitchen window as well and they're in a south facing window they get plenty of sunshine in that kitchen window so they're going to be staying there i keep them there all all year round they do very well a lot of different types of smaller growing euphorbia and some euphorbia obesas and um, i've also got some euphorbia obesa symmetrical seedlings that we got from seed from uh, Daz and Edith at Cacti Mania they're growing really well so they're all going to be staying in our kitchen window but here in the grow room these are going to be coming out and um, I'm just gonna what I'm gonna do I'm gonna show you in the polytunnel the space I've made for these euphorbias because we took out a lot of our smaller uh, serious and other types of cactus plants from them from that table and move them into our white polytunnel so there's going to be plenty of space for these now and I've given all the black trays a good clean that they're going on to and instead of showing you the whole process of moving them all out because it's going to be a very lengthy video otherwise I'm just going to show you here what we've got I'm going to take you into the polytunnel show you where they're going to go so here I am in the polytunnel and these are all the the trays where the euphorbia are going to go on and I'm also going to leave a bit of space as well at the back to put the uh, Hylocereus, the dragon fruit cacti that I've also got in the grow room and I'll probably be doing that in the next day or two so that'll be another video as well and at the moment I've just got here my Crassula fulcata commonly known as the propeller plant and I've got that there because it's leaning over beautiful plant and it's good support there to lean on the train I put all the euphorbias around it and I have a euphorbia in here already this is euphorbia fruticosa and this gorgeous euphorbia is a recent addition that i got from the funky cactus in england and absolutely gorgeous euphorbia so this one is also going to be in there with all the other euphorbias i put this straight out into the into the greenhouse here when i got it and uh i just want to mention the funky cactus i have i'm very happy to be an affiliate for them and uh, if you live in the uk and you love cacti and succulents and you want to know where you can get some awesome cacti and succulents from then do check out my affiliate link to the fun funky cactus I'll, that link will be down below in the video description and because it's an affiliate link I also get a, a comm commission as well on it so it really does help me and my channel so that's the uh, trays all thoroughly cleaned as well and uh, make sure that there's no pests or anything hiding under the trays so as I mentioned this is where the euphorbias are going to go so I'm going to start bringing them down now and putting them away now I've brought down, those are the tallest of the ones because I'm going to be putting them 
at the back first and I'll just show you a little bit about these and uh, also the names of the ones here and uh, this one here is a Euphorbia Bayoensis, absolutely gorgeous stunner. Has lovely sort of silvery thorns, absolutely gorgeous. And lovely little tiny little yellow flowers in the summertime. So that should be coming back into flower when it gets all the heat here in the polytunnel. Absolutely gorgeous. It looks very cactus-like, so it's very understandable that you would think this as a cactus, but it's not because euphorbias have thorns and cacti have spines. And you might say, well, what's the difference between a spine and, and a thorn? Well, the difference is with euphorbias, they, they have thorns that come directly out. With, with cacti, they have what, what is called areoles or areoles. And that's where the spines come out of, the little cushions, where spines and flowers emerge, such as here. This is a, an example here of an areole, and here this is where all the, the spines come from. And so they don't always have spines. This Echino, Echinocactus grusoni in Hermes is one that doesn't have spines. Same as this, this Astrophyta myriostigma as well. It's one that just has the tufts. So that's the difference between euphorbia and cactus. Euphorbia have thorns and cactus have spines. So the second one here, now this isn't a euphorbia, this is an Ocotillo. This is one I got a few years ago from my friend Keith, Groovy Man, on uh, here on YouTube. And uh, that sort of comes into sort of a bit of a dormancy. And then later in the spring, it sends out all these new little leaves, which is just starting to do here. So the heat really encourages this then to come out and come back into growth. This is a Euphorbia Tiracali. And this is a recent addition that we got from our wonderful friend Danny, Danny Rose. And uh, he very kindly gave me a cutting from his uh, lovely Euphorbia Tiracali. We have a larger one of these as well. And that's also going to be coming into the polytunnel, which I'll show you in this video too and here this is our alordia absolutely awesome plant here the little leaves gorgeous and uh that's a it's just an amazing wacky very ocotillo like but it's not amazing and then here is a common very common plant for euphorbia it's euphorbia trigona and lovely little leaves on that it's very very much in active growth so it's going to appreciate coming out here this one is a no id one i did have it labeled but as a as usual the label either fell out or faded and, and gone but uh if anyone can id it and my my wonderful friend Clyde Morris here on YouTube, he's a euphorbia expert. So Clyde, if you can, I think you actually did ID for us the last time, but the label went missing. Maybe you could give us an ID on this. This is one I've had for about 25, 26 years, very long time. It was literally like that when I got it. So it's a lovely, lovely specimen now. And then this one here, this is a euphorbia near, I can never pronounce this, um, Neijuran and Tani. Tarnii. Wow. And this is a very beautiful one as well. Lovely specimen. Always has lovely little, little green little flowers as well. Sort of late, late uh, summer, early autumn. Very lovely. And then this one here, this is gorgeous. This is Euphorbia Cido, um, Cido cactus. Yeah, Euphorbia Cido cactus. And as, as I say, it's not a cactus, it's a euphorbia because it's so cactus-like, that's why it's called that, but gorgeous uh, variegation on this as well. Beautiful. Well, that's the first of the euphorbias put away there. All the sort of more taller ones. And now I've just got all the others in the grow room to bring down, including a lot of the smaller ones as well. So that's what I'm gonna be bringing down next and then talking a little bit about them. Now, this is the next lot of euphorbias I brought down from the grow room, and I'll talk a little bit about them as well. And I'm very happy to say, these here are our Euphorbia Dicari's um, Variety Spira Stitchers. And these were given to us from our wonderful friend Clyde Morris, Morris Park in the Ozarks, here on YouTube. And uh, look guys, it's flowering for the first time for us. Tiny, tiny, tiny little flowers absolutely gorgeous i'm so happy about that so clyde if you're watching this very happy to say the spiral stitches you gave us are growing amazing and they are flowering for the first time for us so very excited gorgeous little tiny blooms amazing so it's a lovely euphorbia and also the other one as well we potted a few of them up that's also been flowering too as you can see flowers just gone on that but it's amazing gorgeous euphorbia i love this little little wavy sort of curly edge leaves as well but 
gorgeous little tiny peach coloured flowers there. Beautiful. And then here, these were also gifted to us from Clyde Morris as well, a few years ago now. And these are, um, these are Euphorbia Stella Spiners. And uh, this, very happy to see lots of new growth on these. As you can see, the lovely new growth at the top with the pink. Absolutely gorgeous here. And this is also the little flowers as well that they produce, these little pink at the top. Absolutely gorgeous here. There, as you can see, Clyde, they're doing very, very well for us. They've been in our south-facing window in the in the grow room office, so they're going to love being out here in the polytunnel with all the heat and the sun. And this also was also from Clyde. This is Euphorbia. This is a Polygona variety snowflake. Another beautiful one as well. Very gorgeous. So they're stunners, and so happy to see the uh, spiral stitches in bloom. Absolutely gorgeous. And then here, this is a lovely, lovely variety here. And I just have to get the label because I'm hopeless at pronouncing them. Now this is Euphorbia. This is Aero, yeah, Aerogenosa. And a gorgeous variety here as well. Just look at the lovely sort of deep red spines and the lovely dark green um, stems. That's absolutely beautiful. And we have a smaller one of these as well in our kitchen window. That's also growing very well for us. And then here, this is a Euphorbia Resinifera. Also um, had that a few years as well, lovely beauty. And then these here are, these are Euphorbia canariensis of quite different sizes here. And um, these ones here, this one is one I've grown from seed. This is also another one I've grown from seed. And this one as well, grown from seed, they're growing really well. But this is one I got a few years ago from Dublin now. And the white powder, by the way, it's not mealybugs, it's actually di diatomaceous earth that I sprinkle on them. So it gives off like a white powder. But the only trouble is it gives off that look and glow as if it's mealybugs. And I always panic when I see it, but it's the, it's the powder that helps to uh, prevent mealybugs. Seems to do a good job as well. And this here is Euphorbia burp... The, Purpley folia, um, cross with Suzanne, absolutely beautiful. One of the Medusioid euphorbias, gorgeous, and it's got loads of new little leaves coming on it as well. So that's growing well. Makes a lovely, lovely bowl here. And uh, here, this one is Euphorbia. Oh, this is a this is a Fruticosa enormis. So this, as I say here, we have the lovely Fruticosa here from um, the funky cactus, a lovely spiny beauty. And this one here is the one that doesn't really have the spines. So this is a different version as well. And uh, very, uh, very lovely there. And you can see, because it's been in the grow room, even though they've been under the grow lights, they've, this is also starting to grow a little bit stretched. They, they don't do too well when they're still in the house at this time of year. Normally, as I say, they would have been out for certainly by the end of April. And they've been wanting to grow so much, and especially now it's been warm. But now it's going to um, love the extra light in here now so i was worried when they're, they're stretching out a little bit even though they were under the grow lights they need the full sun now this one here is one i've had for many years as well but i don't have the idea this one either it's one that i've had for many years and this is a lovely lovely spiny beast or thorny beast i should say so that's a bit about all of these and i'm going to put them away and then bring, bring the rest of them down now these are the uh, the last of the euphorbias that are binging out here and this is our euphorbia flanagani commonly known as the medusa's head and it was flowering only a month ago the ring of lovely yellow flowers so um this is an amazing one it's going to do well out here and then this is another one that we got from clyde morris as well and this is euphorbia submammillaris variety first sodophii <laughs> there's how you pronounce it let's show you the label there lovely little beauty this is another one of our euphorbia mammillaris this is commonly known as the corn cob and it's a lovely variegated form as well we've got two of these i'm going to show you the other one here this is our very sort of big one here like hanging to hanging across like a big snake so when i put this away i'm going to have to have this resting against all these other ones so it obviously doesn't topple over and then this is our euphorbia mammillaris um, the all green variety that we got last year from our friend patricia and it was a cutting it's rooted very well and the reason why it's leaning over like that that's something that they do do these euphorbia mammillaris do grow and they sort of grow like a with a snake-like habit woohoo that's all the euphorbias from the grow room all put away here in the polytunnel for the summer months 
and I bought out my big Euphorbia Tiracali that I had overwintering in our kitchen because it looks perfect there. Getting a little bit too tall for the roof, but just about manages. And this has made a fantastic recovery, guys, because only about two months ago I did a video where I had to do a drastic pruning on it because it got like a whole ball sort of like it looked like scorch marks on it or some type of virus but I think it was due to cold damage. I overwintered this in the grow room with my serious cactus plants and it normally stays around 15 celsius in there but um, it dropped very low. We had some very very cold winter and I know it dropped to about 5 celsius indoors in our grow room and um, that's never happened before and I think it was just a little bit too cold for this. As you can see we cut it back there. Amazing recovery. Loads of new leaves which is absolutely wonderful to see. It's really recovering. Lots of new growth there and it's going to love being out here with the sun and the heat. As I say we've got another one as well which we've got recently from Danny Rose our friend. So very lovely. And so that's a little bit about all the euphorbias. As I say, I have a lot more in my kitchen window. They're going to stay there because they get plenty of sun. They stay there all through the year. Uh, and uh, very happy to get them out, have to say. Very, very good. Happy days. So stay tuned for another video in the next couple of days where I'm going to be bringing in out the... Uh, Hylocereus, the dragon fruits, Pinocereus, Selenicereus, and all them type of cacti that I've still got left in the grow room. That, that's going to be brought out. And then after that, they are all done. And then I'll have uh, lots of work to do in this polytunnel over the next few weeks because it's. I think there's so much tidying up to do. The floor's a mess. And also, I want to rearrange all these cacti on here because. I just like to rearrange things. It's just something I like to do. <laughs> a lot of them have lost the labels. They've just gone missing. I don't know what's happened. A lot of them are disintegrated. I have to relabel a lot of the plants as well and go through them all as well. Got lots coming into flowers. You can see the lovely Mammillaria boccasana there. And very happy, my Mammillaria campatrica flowering for the first time. Buds have closed now because obviously it's sort of late evening here and um, that's why the lighting isn't so brilliant now and it's ideal though for bringing out the um, the euphorbias that I bought out because obviously if it was very very sunny you have to protect plants that have been indoors when you bring them into a brighter place this polytunnel is um, it's coated with like a green it's a green cover which sort of is annoying because I wish it was a nice clear whitish one like our other one but it's ideal for for plants to acclimatize better if it was a clear glass greenhouse and it was very sunny day when I bought these out it could shock them a little bit and get sun scorched but they're, they're fine here because it is shaded with the green and um, it's they're going to acclimatize well it's sort of late evening as well I bought these out so happy days so thank you so much for watching everybody and for lots more tips and tricks on how you can care for and grow many different types of cacti and succulents then don't forget to subscribe do click the notification bell you can also follow me on instagram twitter and facebook at desert plants of avalon and for more growing tips as well as regular blogs do check out my website desertplantsofavalon.com i want to wish you all a fantastic cactus and succulent powered day happy growing you all